Hi, this is Connor for Avid Visions, and today I'm going to be reviewing Nikon's 35mm f1.8. If you'd like to see an unboxing of this lens in a preliminary review, I also have that earlier on our channel. This is Nikon, one of Nikon's cheapest new lenses. Um, it costs only about $200 online. You can find it probably a bit cheaper if you're looking on eBay. And this lens is 35 millimeters because on a crop sensor camera like this D300S, a 35 millimeter lens becomes a 48.5 millimeter lens, which is roughly the 50 millimeter equivalent of film. Basically, if you want to be kind of a photographer like maybe your parents were in their old film days with the classic SLR setup of a 50 millimeter lens, this is the lens that you want to get. If Cartier-Bresson was still alive and doing photography today, he would probably have a D3000 with this lens, or some variation of that. Um, this lens is one of the most popular lenses for all kinds of photography. It's called the standard lens, and it can be used for street photography very frequently. It's used a lot for portraiture, and the large aperture of f1.8 makes it good for some bokeh. So I'm going to show you a test shot right now of our cameraman to show you the bokeh. And another good thing about this lens while I'm talking about bokeh, blur, and focusing is that it has an AFS motor. This means that it will focus automatically with all new Nikon DSLRs, including some of the older ones like the D40 and D60 that the 50mm Nikon f1.8 did not work with. As far as sharpness and contrast are concerned, I would rate this lens very, very highly. As you can see from the picture that I'm going to take in the next couple seconds right here, You have really nice, nice, crisp detail on the bark of the trees, especially when you're at 1.8, like this picture was shot at. Um, so that's good to know that a lens can perform very sharply even when wide open, because this is normally when lens performs before. However, you may notice that at 1.8 in that last shot, that the background bokeh was not the most creamy or pleasing of bokeh from something you've ever seen. I'm going to demonstrate now more thoroughly on one of these flowers here just how lackluster the bokeh can sometimes become. So, we're going to focus really close up. Take the picture. You'll notice that the background is just kind of eh. It's not very creamy. Sometimes the bokeh is good on this lens, and a lot of the times it's acceptable at a portrait length. But if you're at a mid-length, about, say, three meters and at f1.8, the bokeh can be very distracting and you have a lot of double line bokeh, which I will try to give you an example of right here in the video. This lens is one of Nikon's new lenses that has a manual automatic slash manual focusing ring. That means that even though it's in autofocus right now, as you can see by that A, I can still turn the focusing ring to adjust the focus of the lens. However, when I'm talking about the focusing ring, it's worth mentioning that this is an AFS motor, which means that it is very quiet when you're autofocusing on the camera, but when you're actually moving the ring yourself, this particular lens happens to make a kind of grinding noise that you might be able to hear. Um, and this is actually a big problem if you're going to be doing videography with this lens because the grinding will be picked up by the camera's microphone. Another thing to notice about this lens is that when you turn the focus ring, it does not hard stop at infinity. I can continue to turn this way forever and ever or the other way forever and ever. This isn't necessarily a good or bad thing, but it's something to note, especially if you're going to be doing, say, astrophotography with this lens. This is Connor for Avid Vision signing out.